Okay. So that's, uh, the first question is, just tell us something about Kaplan, your, your uh, um, capital and sorry, you are one of the um, largest um, investors there in, in real estate, that's right, yeah. Uh, how, how big is your portfolio? Yeah. So Capital Land was formed about 22 years ago, yeah. and uh, we're a very large, on the ground, vertically integrated real estate investment fund manager, yeah. um, headquartered in Singapore. Uh, we manage about $96 billion uh, in all sectors, um, and we're very dominant in our core markets, Singapore, China, India, mm -hmm. uh, and very large, important um, operations in Japan, Korea, Australia, Malaysia, um, as well as global reach with our Europe and US businesses as well. Yeah, so this, uh, I respect you, you are experts, and now you can say, my, my next question is, what makes Asia so interesting for European investors? Yeah, look, I think the story is quite similar to the story of the last 20, 25 years. Yeah. Asia presents two incredible opportunities for investors, right? Is growth and diversification. So it's been the global growth engine now for decades. That will continue, driven by growing economies, uh, rising middle class, urbanization, um, significant investment in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, as well as the capital markets are developing very significantly all around the, the whole region. REITs to private equity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, real estate's really moving into real assets. So you have um, infrastructure, data centers, credit. You have that whole spectrum of product available in the public and private markets. Okay. I I'd like to know which country is um, especially interesting because you, you, you arranged a lot of countries. Now. Yeah, in, yeah. in my perception, they're quite different. So Japan is a developed yeah. country. India is a huge country yes. with one billion of people now. Uh, Hong Kong is extremely yeah. e expensive. So where, where is your focus on at the moment? Well, I think our focus is throughout the whole region because we have so many investors that want different things from their investments. They even want core investing, or they want to go up the risk return spectrum, or they want to go into a particular sector, like data centers, mm -hmm. right, rather than a diversified portfolio. Mm -hmm. So we really are able to cater to investors' needs. I think our top picks at the moment is that we really do like um, the core markets in the developed um, mm -hmm. countries. So Japan, Korea, Singapore, Australia, those kind of like stable core markets mm -hmm. where even in the office sector, you're seeing some good growth coming through, namely Singapore and Seoul, mm -hmm. right? Whereas other investors still want to go up the risk return spectrum. They see this as a very good vintage year we're coming mm -hmm. into, right? Some of the markets are out of favor. Some of the China narrative is washing across sediment. Mm -hmm. But again, we're seeing some very strong returns available to investors who want to go and still invest in China or want to go into India, which I think is the really big next story the next 10, mm -hmm. 10 years as that market really develops yeah. very strongly. I was there last December, incredibly impressed. Also impressed with markets like Vietnam that have changed so much. And both of those markets are ironically benefiting from the China starting to move some of their manufacturing out. Yeah. Um, no, I would just like to know how, how is the, the structure for a European uh, investor? Yeah, good question. To, to, yeah. to get his money into Asian real estate. Yeah, look, it, it's been the same for decades. There's um, well-proven, established capital structures, legal structures to get money in and out mm -hmm. of all markets um, in Asia, in those mm -hmm. developing countries. Um, you know, even China, you can still get your money in and out, right? But it, German investors mainly go into the developed markets, Japan, Australia, Singapore, Korea, mm -hmm. right? They've got a very good track record uh, the last 15, 25 years even of getting their money in and out. And in those countries, you also don't need to have a a, a local partner to invest. Mm -hmm. But you do if you're going into markets like Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, for instance. German investors typically, you know, gravitate towards those big, mature, established markets where there's right of uh, law um, and your ownership entitlement to the land and buildings is very, very well proven. 
So what, what was the meaning of, if you speak with, uh, with German investors here in Investment Expo? Is it, uh, is it for them a good investment or did, did they say it's too risky for us? What's We have a number of German investors now yeah. okay. investing in yeah. Yeah. core core plus investments yeah. Yeah. where you can get a nice steady income distribution of yeah. like 5% and a total return over yeah. time of maybe 8 to 10, 11%. Yeah. So Germans are really looking at core plus as a nice entry platform. Yeah. And now they're looking at going up the risk return spectrum a little bit into value add. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And again, it's because they're seeing diversification They're seeing the benefits of going cross-border. Yeah. And they're seeing that, again, the story about Asia is growth and diversification mm. at a time when compared to other regions, yeah. Europe, particularly Germany, has a lower allocation um, than what you know their, their target allocations are. So they're underweight. But I think at the moment there's a little bit of a pause, right? People are looking at this market. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's very volatile. There's lots of headlines. Yeah. So I think people are, you know, taking it steady, but to the Germans' credit and, and the Dutch, they're really making sure they keep up their trips to the region, uh, looking at opportunities and continuing to invest, albeit a little bit slower than they have been yeah. in the past, but we think that's going to increase. Of course, as you know, in the Europe and also in the US, the, the rise of the interest rate is, is a big topic. Yeah. Has this also happened likewise in, yeah. in, in the Asian state? Yeah, look, I think there's global synchronization in interest rates, mm. other than China, where rates have been going down and where inflation has been under control. Um, so the capital markets have always kind of decoupled in China. But if you look at the other markets, um, Korea, Japan, Australia, Singapore, interest rates have gone up. I think arguably we're pretty much at that kind of level phase at the moment. There might be another rate increase in Australia possibly, but I do think that it is creating the effect of reducing inflation. Um, and it will in the real estate markets create some pressure as well for some owners. Okay. So an example might be if you've bought real estate the last two years, when you come to refinance, there might be kind of a gap between you know, what interest rates you you finance with compared to where they might be in the next, you know, two or three years. Mm. And that funding gap, you know, could be also an opportunity for investors in that value add okay. space okay. also. Yeah. So that situation is comparable to what we have here? I think so, okay. yeah. I think it's less severe than the US where there's a, a very deep kind of troubled commercial sector. Yeah, it's there. always faster and deeper than here. Yeah, and I think in the US, the other big difference is the work from home uh, is, is still quite prevalent, right? Whereas in Asia, they're all back at work. Mm -hmm. Other than Australia, my, my home country, you know, they're, they're lagging a little bit. They like the outdoors. Yeah. But the other markets of Singapore, Korea, China, um, Japan, they're all back at work. Simon, thank you very much. Yeah for joining us for the very interesting aspect of the Asia market. Yeah. And uh, have a good yeah, investment expert. Right. Yeah? Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Right. Thank you.